So the purpose of the study is, as, as I mentioned, we're going to continue to follow people that have already been in our study for the past five years and recruit 40 more people who are 25 years and older. And the idea is we want to follow changes in learning and memory as they get older. We are seeing some of these changes in our older cohort. We want to understand when they start to happen. It's a little easier to study down Alzheimer's disease and Down syndrome because of the age dependency of when they develop their signs of dementia. So in the general population, anybody can develop Alzheimer's disease at different ages. It could be, actually, if they have a familial, it could be in their 30s and their 20s. Uh, typically, it's in the 60s, 70s, 80s, but that's 30 years, 40 years span of time when somebody could start developing the disease. Okay, so there's an, a normal hippocampus for a 46-year-old male, and if you look at somebody with Down syndrome, you can see their hippocampus has lost a huge amount of tissue. The other thing you can see is, see the gaps between the tissue? It should be really tightly packed. There's lots of space. So it's all taken up with cerebral spinal fluid, actually. And you can see the ventricle is huge. And that tells us that the brain is shrinking. Why did you want to participate in this? When my daddy it showed me a piece of paper that, sh that shows everything about their study, and I was kind of, uh, I was kind of nervous at first, but it was okay. Brooke had talked a bit about being anxious about dementia and Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, she's had some friends who have that, and her grandmother, who is older, and I just got, I just did a search. She's about 98. 98. 97, 98. Um, I did a search, and this study came up, and I talked to Brooke's mom about it. I'm the stepmother, and um, talked to the dad, Norm, her dad. Yeah, Norm. And there was a little anxiety about mentioning Alzheimer's, the, yeah. what the study's all about. So we went and Norm had the piece of paper and he said, Brooke, I've got this study that we're interested in. And um, How did he get the paper? I got him from Roberta. Oh, okay. And he said, and he said it has to do with memory. And she said, are you talking about Alzheimer's? Yeah. And she said, I'm in. I want to do it. What we can learn from people with Down syndrome is a way to maybe prevent the disease because we know the ages of which all their brain changes happen and when we expect to see signs of dementia. So they are at an advantage in some ways because when we develop a prevention procedure, we can try that in people with Down syndrome and benefit them. And then maybe one day we can take that out to Alzheimer's in the general population. So. Um, in the new study, we propose to include gait analysis, and this is new for us, and uh, we're pretty excited about that. Gait might change with age and might also signal dementia onset. And also, gait disturbances tell us a lot about neurological function, which the neurologist assess for us. So we thought we would try to capture that very systematically with this new equipment, uh, with the added benefit that that equipment could be purchased by other groups together the same kinds of data so we can build up a big database of information about what changes happen with gait. Uh, is there a slowing? Is there a reluctance? And we can put obstacles down. Do they hesitate? Uh, maybe when a person with Downs is younger, that's not a problem at all. They'll just go through the, the walk the whole path without any difficulty. And then maybe we'll see those gait changes come before we even see changes in learning and memory.